Hey guys, in this video we're going to review how to do a related rates problem. The problem is, an inverted conical container has a diameter of 6 inches and a depth of 15 inches. If water is flowing out of the vertex of the container at a rate of 2 pi cubic inches per second, how fast is the depth of the water dropping when the height of the water is 10 inches? Now these problems seem a little bit overwhelming when you read them, so you might have to read them a couple times to get a feel of what's going on. You're also going to want to label your diagram and list anything you know and anything that you're trying to find. So let's start again from the beginning and start that process. An inverted conical container has a diameter of 6 inches. Now they're referring to the circle at the top, that's the diameter they're referring to, so let's mark that off. So this here is going to be 6, and they tell us the depth is 15. So the depth would be the height of this conical container. Okay, uh, water is flowing out of the vertex at a rate of 2 pi inches cubed per second. So the fact that the units are cubic inches tells me that this has to do with the volume, and over time, the water is coming out so the volume is becoming less and less. So that's going to be dv dt is equal to negative 2 pi cubic inches per second. Once again, this value is negative because over time the quantity is becoming less and less. There's less and less water in this tank. Now, this diagram down here, the smaller triangle inside, the smaller cone, represents the water remaining in the tank. And as time goes on, the water is less and less. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this upper circle, this little portion here, I'm going to call it R. And I'm going to call this height here H. And that's going to be important in a few seconds. So the question says, how fast is the depth of the water dropping? In other words, they're asking us to find dh dt when the height of the water is 10 inches. Okay, so we've labeled our diagram, we've listed what we know, and we've listed what we're trying to find. So as the title might suggest, related rates, we need some way of relating all these variables together. And that's going to be through the volume of a cone formula. That formula is one-third pi r squared h. In a related rates problem, after I write down the formula or the way that these variables are going to be related, I want to ask myself if over time these variables are changing in value. So over time, is the volume of water in the tank changing? The answer is yes. Over time, is this the radius of this upper circle changing? And the answer is yes, and over time is the height of the water remaining changing? And the answer is yes. If something's changing over time, we cannot plug in to the formula until we've taken a derivative. Because all of these variables are changing over time, we can't plug anything in just yet. But the problem is we have these two variables here, and it would be much easier if there was just one variable. So I'm going to relate R and H together through the use of similar triangles. The big triangle, who, the, whose top here is uh, 3, because that's going to be the, the radius of this upper circle. So this top triangle here, uh, 3 and then 15 from top to bottom, and this smaller triangle with a top of R and a side of H. So I'm going to make a separate little equation, or a proportion actually, based on similar triangles. And I'm going to say 3 is to 15 as r is to h. In other words, the top of the big is to the left of the big as the top of the little is to the left of the little triangle. Now 3 fifteenths reduces to 1 fifth. And then if I cross multiply this, I get h equals 5r. Okay, now since I'm trying to find dh dt, I want my variable to be h. I want to have h in my equation so that I can solve for h. So I really would prefer to get rid of the r. So what that means is I'm going to isolate r, and r is going to equal 1 fifth h. 
This expression is going to be really important in a moment. I'm going to rewrite the volume formula, but this time I'm going to plug in this new expression for R. And that expression is 1 fifth H. I'm going to square that one term in the middle. I'll clean up a little bit more. And now I'll take the derivative. Taking the derivative of something in one variable is a lot easier. If you had used the two variables from the beginning, you would have needed the product rule, which is a little bit more complicated. So this step right here, or these two steps, just make the whole process a little bit easier. So now I'm going to take the derivative, remembering that I'm taking the derivative with respect to time t. Okay, and now I'm going to clean that up a little bit. Let's assess where we're at right now. So we're trying to find dh dt. I know dv dt, so I can plug in for that. And I also know I have to find it when h is 10, so I can plug in for that. So every, this is going to be pretty easy. I really just need to substitute in those two things and then solve for dh dt. So let's finish the problem. dv dt is negative 2 pi. Now we're supposed to find dh dt when h is equal to 10. So I'm going to plug that in right here. Oh, it's actually supposed to be squared. Now I'm running out of space, so I'm going to come up here. The pi's cancel out. 20, uh, 100 divided by 25 is 4. And when you're done, you want to think about what your units are going to be. This is referring to the change in height over time or the change in depth. This is going to be negative one half inches per second. 